Welcome to the Doctrinal Component with Tom Nettles, brought to you by Founders Ministries. Founders Ministries is a reformed teaching organization committed to the recovery of the gospel and the reformation of local churches. For more teaching material by Dr. Nettles, please visit founders.org. Welcome to this edition of the Doctrinal Component. Uh, This is Tom Nettles, and today I want to talk about one of the most well-known preachers of evangelicalism of the 19th and 20th centuries, and uh, as well as one of the best expositors. Uh, I want to look at a particular section of one sermon by a man named Alexander McLaren. Uh, McLaren lived from 1826 to 1910. He was a Scotsman. He was born in Glasgow. Uh, He went to school at Stepney College, which had been founded in 1810 in London. Uh, Eventually, this became Regent's Park College, which is a part of the system of Oxford University. He served as pastor and preacher at Portland Chapel in Southampton for several years. And in 1858, he went to Manchester, England, and he was its preacher till 1903 there. He was well known throughout uh, the world. He was uh, very active uh, as a preacher and as a commentator in the the Baptist Union of Great Britain and Ireland. Twice he served as president of the Baptist Union. And then when the Baptist World Alliance was established in 1905, Alexander McLaren was its first president. Uh, He published many works. Uh, Most of these arose out of his preaching ministry. There's a multi-volume expositional uh, encyclopedia of the sermons of Alexander McLaren. They are rich in their content. Uh, He's had sort of a silver silver, silver hammer for hermeneutical issues. He could take a text and He could strike it and it would break forth into its constituent uh, elements uh, in a very memorable way. Uh, There is a sermon that he has in an exposition that he did on Jonah. And he's talking about the commission that God gave to Jonah and the particular words that God gave Jonah to say to the Ninevites. And it's um, a comment that he made about preaching in that context of talking about Jonah's message that I want to focus on just for a few minutes today. McLaren says, The word rendered preach is instructive. It means to cry and suggests the manner benefiting those who bear God's message. They should sound it out loudly, plainly, urgently, with earnestness and marks of emotion in their voices. Languid whispers will not wake sleepers. Unless the messenger is manifestly in earnest, the message will fall flat, not with bated breath, as if ashamed of it, nor with hesitation, as if not quite sure of it, nor with coldness, as if it were of little urgency, is God's word to be peeled in men's ears. The preacher is a crier. The substance of his message, too, is set forth. That is, set forth for Jonah by God's revelation. The preaching which I bid thee, not his own imaginations, nor any fine things of his own spinning. Suppose Jonah had entertained the Ninevites with dissertations on the evidence of his prophetic authority, or submitted for their consideration a few thoughts tending to show the agreement of his message with their current opinions in religion, or an argument for the existence of a retributive governor of the world, he would not have shaken the city. The less the prophet shows himself, the stronger his influence the more simply he repeats the stern, plain, short message, the more likely it is to impress. God's word, faithfully set forth 
will prove itself. The preacher or teacher of this day has substantially the same charge as Jonah had. And the more he suppresses himself and becomes but a voice through which God speaks, the better for himself, his hearers, and his work. Uh, I want to make just three quick observations about these comments of McLaren on preaching. Number one, the messenger must have a clear conviction that his mission is from God, not from himself. Uh, hopefully this will not involve the same trauma that was experienced by Jonah, but he should approach his message with equal certainty, knowing that the Bible is the word of God, and to the degree that he derives all of his points out of the Bible, uh, then he speaks with absolute certainty, and he can have a conviction that is consistent with such certainty. Number two, his affections should be fitting for the importance of the message. Human sin, divine judgment, the call to repent, the glory of the Redeemer, the hope of eternal life, all of these things should be set deeply within the mind and within the heart of the preacher so that when he speaks of these things, there will be the expressions in his voice and in his language that shows the eternal importance of these particular issues. And number three, the eternal relevance of the message that transcends the trivia that occupy the minds and energies of the world. It is a message that originates with the first instructions of God to his image bearer. Obey and live. Disobey and die. The seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. What God told Adam there has been expanded upon in Scripture, has come to pass in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, culminating in his crucifixion, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and is the eternal source of our comfort through his present intercession. With such subjects as these, the preacher should be able to follow with clarity the observations made by McLaren on the importance, the pungency of preaching. Thank you very much for your attention today. I look forward to our next session.